Welcome to the beautiful city of Florence. I'm Laura Bronner, and I'm here for a few days exploring this city with my mom. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I'll show you all of the absolute best things to do in Florence to help you plan your trip to this incredible art and architecture filled city. Oh, and the food is pretty amazing too. Florence is the capital city of Italy's Tuscany region and located about two hours north of Rome by train. You could explore it as a day trip, but there is so much to see and do in this city, you'll definitely want to give it more time. We stayed at a cute little Airbnb with two bedrooms and a nice kitchen right near the main train station. It costs about $120 per night, and I will link to it in the description below. From here, you can easily walk everywhere in the city, starting with the Basilica di Santa Maria Novella. This basilica was built in the 15th century and is a beautiful place to explore, both on the inside and outside. You can simply visit the church, or for a few extra euros, you can visit the museum as well. If you carry on for a few minutes, you reach what is arguably the best thing to see in Florence. Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, or simply the Duomo. You can enter the church for free by waiting in the ever-present line that wraps almost all the way around the church, or you can actually go up into the dome. Pre-purchase the Brunelleschi Pass, which costs 30 euros, on the Duomo's official website, and you select a time slot to enter the dome. This ticket also gives you priority entrance to the church, so you never have to wait in that long line. You also get access to climb the bell tower, as well as enter the Cathedral Museum and St. John's Baptistry. The first part of the climb takes you up close to the paintings on the dome. The second half takes you up to the top for the views of the city. 463 steps. Here we go. After climbing up and then back down those 463 steps, we treated ourselves to a little pick-me-up right in the piazza. From here, you can walk towards the Piazza della Repubblica and then over to the Mercato de Porcellino, where you'll find tons of vendors selling leather bags, wallets, jackets, and gloves. It's also where you'll find the Fontana del Porcellino, an iconic bronze boar that legend says if you rub his snout, you're sure to return to Florence. If you're feeling peckish while you're here, get in line at Venki Chocolato for their insanely delicious gelato. From here, you're only a block away from another famous piazza in Florence, Piazza della Signoria, home to Palazzo Vecchio, this large stone palace at the center of it all. The Fountain of Neptune to the left of the palace was built in the 16th century, and the palace itself was built in the 13th century. You can enter the ground floor area for free, but to go inside the palace, you need to grab a ticket for about 10 euros. Next door is also one of the most famous art museums in the city, the Uffizi Gallery. But it was nearly lunchtime, so we headed to the nearby La Bussola for some local treats, pasta with Chianti Carbonara and truffle pizza to share between us. On our second day in Florence, we headed to Basilica de Santa Croce, 
Santa Croce is the largest Franciscan church in the world and is home to some incredible art and quite a lot of people who shook up the art and culture during their time in the world. Here rests Michelangelo, Leonardo Bruni, and Galileo, as well as several other notable Italians. The grounds of the church are also stunning on a sunny day. It's my third trip to Florence, and I finally got tickets to the Accademia Gallery, which, among many stunning sculptures and paintings, is home to Michelangelo's David. Be sure to pre-book your tickets so that you don't have to wait in the long line for what must be over an hour. In a bid to avoid upsetting YouTube, and anyone else for that matter, <laughs> we've placed a little coverage over him. While you're nearby the gallery, head to Robilio, a beautiful little cafe and bakery that is making some of the best pastries that I ate in Florence. From here, wander the streets until you reach Basilica di San Lorenzo, the burial place of the Medici family, and a library that was designed by Michelangelo. For another piece of beautiful Florence, head across the river on any bridge except for the Ponte Vecchio. That way you can enjoy an amazing view back over this historical bridge that has been home strictly to jewelry stores since the 15th century. Of course, walking on the bridge is also recommended so you can browse all the cute shops. While you're on the other side of the river, make your way to Palazzo Pitti. Palazzo Pitti dates back to 1458 and was initially the home of Florentine banker Luca Pitti. It was then bought by the Medici family in 1549 and became the main residence of the families of the Grand Duchy of Tuscany. In the late 18th century, Napoleon used the palace as his base. Now it's a museum that you can explore fully, including the outdoor gardens, known as the Boboli Gardens. Finish the day with an incredible cocktail made from Italian-only spirits at Manifatura. I hope you enjoyed traveling to Florence with me. It's a city that I absolutely love, even in the heat, even when it's packed with tons of other tourists. But if you're looking to avoid the crowds, better to come in the late shoulder seasons like October and March. Join me next week as I head to a totally different country in Europe with more food that I love to another city that I also love a whole lot. Thanks as always for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.